Good afternoon once again. Uh, in our previous lesson, we talked about uh, successive matrix of transformation and how to find a single matrix of transformation. Now, in this lesson, we are going to talk about uh, a shear as a part of matrix, matrix transformation. What is shear? Uh, shear is a transformation that will always try to stretch the object. Uh, for example, we are going to see in the question that is given there, that given that point A is negative 6, 5, is mapped onto A prime, that is 6, negative 4, by a shear with x axis invariant. Draw triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime, the image of triangle A, B, C under the shear. Part 2. Determine the matrix representing the shear. Now, the first case we have been given, we are given the diagram that is drawn on the Cartesian plane. The diagram is drawn on the Cartesian plane. We are given that A is 6, negative 6, 5. B is negative 4, 1. And C is 3, 2. Point A, we are told that has been mapped onto A prime. A prime, that is negative 6, negative 4. Then we come to the, our diagram. Negative 6, 5. Then it has moved to negative 4. Uh, negative 5. So with those points, we can get the shear factor. How do we get the shear factor? Now to get the shear factor, we must uh, find how many units does A move from the invariant line, then the, the distance of A to A prime. So when you look at the units from from A to A prime, we have nine units. From A to A prime, we have nine units. Then from A to the invariant line, remember Y axis is our invariant line. Y axis is our invariant line. So it has moved from zero to six, is six units. Therefore, the shear factor is 9 units, that is the distance from A to A prime, that is 9 units. Then from uh, uh, the invariant line to the coordinate of A is 6 units. Therefore, the shear factor is 1.5 as the shear factor. Then from there, we can now locate point B, the image of point B. Now, how are we going to locate? Let us look at the distance of B from the invariant line. Our invariant line is y-axis. So B is 4 units from the invariant line. B is 4 units from the invariant line. Therefore, the shear factor is 1.5. So 1.5 times 4. 1.5 times 4 uh, will give us 6. So implying that uh, A prime or B prime, B prime is 6 units from B. Then we count from 1 we move up to negative 5. Remember, our movement is must move parallel to the invariant line. And the invariant line is the y-axis. So we are moving 6 units along this invariant line. And when we move from 1 to negative 5, we'll find that we have moved 6 units. Therefore, the coordinate of B prime after that shear is negative 4, negative 5 as the shear 
uh, as the share coordinate of B after it has been shared by the by the given share factor of 1.5. Then we move to C. When we are moving to C, then we look at the coordinate of C. The coordinate of C is 3, 2. C is therefore 3 units from the invariant line. Our invariant line is on this other side. Uh, the invariant line is on this is y axis is y axis so when you move along the y axis three units you will find that you are ending at uh, at three units that is three units from there then the shear factor is 1.5 therefore these three units times 1.5 we get 4.5 4.5 but we move parallel to the invariant line how do we move here? Do we move downwards or upwards? In this case, we are going to move upwards. 4.5 units. When you add, we are at 2. On the y axis, we are at 2. When we add 4.5 to 2, we will end up at 6.5. Therefore, the coordinate of C prime after the shear is 3, comma uh, 6.5 as that coordinate of the C prime after the shear factor of uh, 1.5. That is how generally we can obtain that image. Point to note, in a shear, the points that lie on the invariant line remain unchanged or unmoved. That's why when you look at our diagram here, when you look at our diagram, this is the, uh, the point along the line AC. This is the line that lies on the invariant line. Therefore, at that particular point, that line remains unchanged because it lies on the invariant line. The same to line BC. Line BC, you find that at the, the y-intercept of that line, that line lies on the y-axis. And remember, our y-axis is the invariant line. Therefore, that line remains on the invariant line. So there are the points that lies on the invariant line remains invariant. That means they are not moved and that's why we are fixed. So it is somehow like fixing a, peg, uh, fixing a, a pin here, then try to rotate, try to move, uh, you fix here with the pin, then try to move it downwards, we find that this side moves up and this side moves downwards. And the fact that the shear factor is positive, uh, we know that the any terms of positive rotation must be done clockwise. So the point C must move upwards, just as we are saying. Now, the second question, determine the matrix representing the shear. How do we determine the matrix that represents the, uh, the shear? The first, we say that uh, shear uh, is, let the shear matrix be A, B, C, D. Then let us take the two coordinates A and B, and A prime and B prime. When we have that, when we have 6 times A, that is negative 6 times A, that is negative 6A, then 5 plus 5 times b, which is 5b, is equal to negative 6 here. The same will have negative 4 times a is negative 4a. 1 times b is plus b is equal to negative 4 here. When you solve these two equations simultaneously, you will find that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0. We move to c and d, we'll have c, that is a... Uh, that is B and D will have B times will have uh, 6 times C uh, that is uh, giving us negative 6 C that is negative 6 times C is negative 6 C plus 5 times D gives us 5 D is equals to negative 4 the same will have negative uh, 4 times C gives us negative 4C 
1 times d is 1 plus 1 d is equals to negative 5 that. When you solve for c, c is equals to 1.5, d is equals to 1. Therefore, the matrix representing that here is 1, 0, 1.5, 1 as the matrix. Point to note, a shear is fully described if and only if the following are given. One, the invariant line must be mentioned. Two, the image of a point not on the invariant line must be mentioned. Because points that lie on the invariant line remain unchanged. So therefore, the point that lies on the invariant, that, the point that does not lie on the invariant line will remain, will be changed. So that's, we must give the coordinates. For example, the one, the example we have just said, we can say that the shear is a, a, a is a shear, a shear with the, the line y axis invariant, and we are given the image of point A, we are given the image of A, the image of A here is mapped onto A prime that. When you give the image and the invariant line like point A is mapped onto A prime that, then the shear with the y axis invariant, then you have completely defined that particular word, shear. Now the general matrix for the shear, x axis invariant, uh, take the form of 1, 0, k, 1, y, that of y axis or y axis invariant uh, takes the form of 1, k, 0, 1. Where k is the shear factor, or what we call the scale factor. Therefore, for us to get the shear, once you have the shear factor or the scale factor, we could easily substitute, instead of working out all this, at this particular point where we had the shear factor of 1.5, if we knew the general equation, then we would simply substitute because we were told this uh, y axis invariant. So the general equation is given by 1, 0, k, 1, where k is the share factor. So when we substitute uh, negative uh, 1.5 as the share factor for this particular shear, then we'll end up getting the shear uh, that represents. Uh, that matrix, uh, the share that represented the matrix there as this. So we can use the general equation once you have the share factor. If you are given the share factor, then you can use the general equations of the share. The one for the x-axis is given and the y-axis is also given. That is about share. So generally share is a, is a, a transformation that normally alters the shape of an object. It alters the shape of an object. Stretch. When we are talking of stretch, stretch, and many a times we have stretched so many things. For example, you may have a rubber band tied somewhere. You try to stretch that rubber band, you will find that the rubber band will stretch. When you leave it, it returns back. You can only stretch that rubber band when you hold one side. Or, or then you stretch, you, tie, you can tie it on a fixed point, then you stretch it, it will move. So stretch just behave, just as the name, uh, as the name suggests, stretch. So in a stretch, it's the same thing. We have a matrix of stretch. Then how do we have the matrix of stretch? We can use a unit square. For example, when you, uh, you stretch this unit square with, uh, in this case, we have the y-axis being invariant, we have here the y-axis being invariant. If the y-axis is invariant, then you try to stretch the i and the k, you will end up at 4. So k prime and i prime will remain here. Just as what we mentioned in here, the same happens to stretch. The points that lie on the invariant line do not move. They remain fixed where they are. Therefore, the j prime and the O prime will remain at those particular points because they lie on the invariant line. So when you are stretching, it is only the K and the I that will be moved. 
to this particular point that that uh, that is 4 1 for k and 4 0 for i as uh, the good news so when we have the general matrix the general matrix of a stretch x axis invariant uh, scale factor k is given by 1 0 0 k while that of y axis invariant is given by k 0 0 1 where k is the scale factor for the stretch uh, thank you and you can have a blessed holiday and may you stay safe at home god bless all of you thank you